This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. There's a lot of fear right now. The pandemic is frightening. It's normal to be afraid. Let's talk about it. Everyone I've met feels at least some concern over these outbreaks. I do too. The world seems to have fallen victim to that ancient curse, may you live in interesting times. These are certainly interesting times, aren't they? Not the best of times, but certainly interesting. I know a bit about fear. I've lived through some very frightening circumstances. I'm a combat veteran, and believe me when I say that soldiers feel fear. The first time that anyone realizes that there's a person just over there who actively wants to kill them is pretty frightening. It was for me, anyway. Just a short distance away was someone who wanted a corpse of me. Not because they knew me or because I was anyone in particular. I was just another soldier from America, and they figured that if enough soldiers from America died, then America would leave. They didn't know us, and we didn't know them. And yet, they still planted bombs on the roads to blow us up. They fired anti-tank rockets and automatic weapons at us. They dropped mortars on us. And for our part, we shot at them too. We dropped bombs on them and fired artillery at them. Some of us died, and some of them died. Some of us were wounded, and some of them were wounded. And I am willing to bet that every sane person on both sides of that war was afraid. Right now, everyone who knows anything about this pandemic is afraid. Some are in denial, and some are angry, and some are trying to make bargains, and some are depressed, and some have accepted that the threat is real, but everyone is afraid, even if they don't want to admit it. How do we go forward in the face of this fear? By choosing to be brave. Bravery doesn't mean that there is no fear. The bravest people I've ever met, doing the bravest things I've ever seen, were scared to their core. What bravery means is that a person is aware of the situation and its risks and chooses to do what needs to be done despite the risks involved. This is easy to see when we look at a student standing in front of a tank in Tiananmen Square, or when someone dashes out into traffic to pull someone else out of the way before they get hit. It's easy enough to see when someone like Malala doesn't let a brutal attack stop her from spreading her message. It can be a little harder to see when it's everyday bravery. Everyday bravery happens when the risks are small. It happens when not everyone can see the risks, and it happens when people see risks everywhere. When someone with social anxiety goes to work or school, it takes everyday bravery. When someone who is terrified of mice resets a mouse trap and disposes of the dead mouse, it takes everyday bravery. It also takes everyday bravery to follow reasonable and prudent measures during this crisis. It takes everyday bravery to choose to believe that the outbreak will subside, to accept that most people who do contract the virus will experience mild symptoms and fully recover, to stay in self-quarantine when exposed, and to face that the infection may come despite what precautions we take. It takes everyday bravery to choose to remain calm and keep as much to a normal routine as possible. We need some everyday bravery right now. Not bravado, taking unnecessary risks like licking toilet seats for social media clout, but real bravery to believe that this outbreak will pass. Necessary steps have been taken and assistance for those affected directly and indirectly is becoming available. Vaccines have been developed, or are being developed, and in some cases are already being tested. Existing retroviral treatments are being tested to determine their effectiveness in mitigating the effects of this illness. The outbreaks are part of a genuine crisis, partially because of the disease, but even more so because of the disruptions necessary to contain it. And most of all, because of fear. Fear is emptying store shelves. Fear is causing people to scream for someone to do something, anything, 
despite all of the things which already have been done, all the things that are currently being done, and all of the proposals that are coming out on a daily basis. We all need to calm down just a little bit and practice a little everyday bravery. Follow the guidance given by your local officials. Keep six feet of social distance when you are out and about. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Disinfect surfaces whenever possible. Use sanitizer when hand washing isn't available. Learn the symptoms to watch out for and consult with a medical professional if you start experiencing them. Fever, cough, shortness of breath. Know that this outbreak will be contained and that normal life will resume after it subsides. If nothing else, you can cynically realize that most of the leaders of this country, and every other country for that matter, are old enough that this virus poses a significant threat particularly to their health and trust that they will act quickly to end this outbreak even if it's only because of that. Bravery doesn't just happen. It's a choice. Really, it's just choosing not to let what you know keep you from doing what you know needs to be done or from doing what you know you need to refrain from doing despite your emotions. We will ride this out. It's going to be tough for a while and we don't know for how long but honestly, we will. This world has survived influenza, yellow fever, Ebola, HIV, polio, bubonic plague, measles, tuberculosis, smallpox, and leprosy, all of which are infectious diseases and all of which have killed lots of people. This world has survived even when the Black Death wiped out half the population of Europe. The world survived the Spanish flu pandemic, which killed up to 100 million people before it subsided. The world has survived the HIV epidemic, which has killed tens of millions and still threatens us to this day. We will find effective treatments so that more people will survive a severe infection. We will find a vaccine that protects us from this infection in the first place. I'm still afraid. I'm afraid for the people that I love. I'm afraid for my friends. I'm afraid for people that I don't even know and will never know. But I choose to be brave and believe that everything will be all right, even if it's not soon. I think that we will weather this crisis better if we could just choose to be brave.